Facts. Let's resume now with the Republican race for Texas Attorney General. The incumbent Ken Paxton is on the attack against Louis Gohmert, and Gohmert told us there's only one reason for that. Congressman Gohmert, welcome to our program. Glad to have you here. Uh, I want to ask you first about the incumbent Ken Paxton going on the attack against you here. What are your internal polls showing about whether you would make a runoff? Well, actually, we haven't done a poll since I very first got in. But I know Paxton's got nine times more money than I do, so he's running polling constantly. And for him to go on the attack against only one of the three people uh, that is running against him tells you his polling that's going on constantly tells him uh, he is going to be in a runoff with me, and he's trying to avoid that. In Conroe the other day, Congressman, Donald Trump recognized you as a friend who has been with him since day one. You yeah. are a longtime loyal supporter of the former president. But he again endorsed your opponent, Ken Paxton. Uh, why do you think Trump is backing Paxton over you? Trump called me after I announced and said, hey, I was told you were definitely not running. And he reiterated yeah. that when we talked uh, uh, last week. And he had called. And anyway... Uh, he encouraged me to come to Conroe, uh, and so I did. But uh, he's, we're still friends, but uh, the, one of the things we love about him is he's stubborn. He's never pulled back an endorsement, and I didn't figure he would in this situation. But uh, his way of handling that was to give us both a great shout-out. Everyone knows this. You know it. You're, you're practically walking away from a guaranteed seat in Congress. What happens if you don't make the runoff on March 1st? What happens to Louis Gomer? Well, I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I never take anything for granted, but yeah, I usually won with around three fourths of the vote. But uh, that's a big difference between me and Paxton. Paxton, well, in my case, I'm willing to risk any political future I have to try to save Texas, because without Texas, no Republican can win the White House. I want to save Texas so we can save our country, whereas Paxton is willing to risk the state and country to save his own skin. Congressman, I, there are a number of issues in this race. We have uh, three or four minutes left here. I want to ask you about a couple of them first. Your, your record in Congress uh, has become an issue in this race by some of your opponents. Uh, Ken Paxton and Eva Guzman bo both pointing out uh, that you have missed more than 800 votes since being uh, elected uh, initially back in 2005. What do you tell Republican primary voters about that? Well, look, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of votes. And one of them is a uh, approval of the journal, which is the transcript from the previous day. As a judge, I never approved a transcript unless I read it. So that accounts for many of the votes and many of the votes too, whether it's quorum call or some votes, uh, you know, on suspensions are done just so they get us to the floor and can whip up on us and try to get us to vote for something they don't want. Uh, when those are the votes, uh, I'm not in a hurry to get there. I did miss uh, one vote that was inconsequential. It wouldn't have mattered, and I put that on the record. My cousin had died. I was his legal representative. I needed to get back. It was totally unexpected. Um, but he made an issue of missing that, even though uh, it, it didn't make any difference in the scheme of things. But uh, he also has put out stuff saying I'm not conservative. And that just shows how desperate he is and what a liar he is. Because if you look at all the different entities, conservative entities, including conservative review, that rate people, they analyze the bill. They don't cherry pick and say there was something good in this, but then fail to put how bad the other stuff was in it. You have to weigh all those things when you vote. He cherry picks. He's lying. And it just shows how desperate it is. All people have to do is look at the conservative entities that rate members of Congress, and they will know what the people of East Texas have known about three-fourths of them each election, that I stand for what I say I will, and no liar like Ken Pax. Well, what do you expect? He's under indictment from securities fraud. He's about to get invited, indicted after the primary in all likelihood for uh, corruption. So adding lies to him, not just the lies he told in his private life, but to voters, he's desperate. And some of the people that work for him had uh, thought that perhaps 
he wants to win the primary so that when he gets indicted, he can work a deal with the feds and say, look, I won't campaign. I'll let the Democrat win if you just won't recommend jail time for me. He's putting Texas at risk. Congressman, we are out of time, unfortunately, but I appreciate your insight and good luck to you, sir. Thank you. Thanks so much. Appreciate being with you.